Welcome to the Trading Lounge and the Day Ahead Report. And here we're looking at the Dow Jones and um, on a daily chart. And as pointed out yesterday and the day before, I think, um, that, you know, as this is moving up through here, it's moving into the, the old highs, the supply. There'll be sellers there or profit taking there. And we expect a correction. In the bigger picture, the 13,500 here is significant in terms that, you know, even when the price has been work coming up through here, realistically, it's, it's actually just been working with this price all the time. You know, it's found, um, you know, it's made a new high, it's come back and tested the support, uh, and that's there. And what it's trying to do now is develop support on the 13,500. And it's still uh, still got further to go within that. So when we're when we're looking at that, we can see that the the move up through here, um, it, nice impulse wave up through here. So it's positive. So um, we're expecting a corrective pattern. You know to check back in through here. The distance above can be the distance below. Uh, it can move to, and this would be with uh, most markets at the moment. Um, the the euro. Uh, Australian dollar, uh, the S&P 500 and so forth, uh, European markets. So it's pretty much the same sort of story and they'll be working with their numbers as well. Um, so we could see that it was struggling and creeping through here and um, now it's sort of having its correction. How big its correction will be is always a little bit of un unknown. Um, they can be worked out a bit more closely in terms of, well, yes, the retracement level, of course, but... Um, once the first leg down is completed, then we kind of understand the range that we'll be working in and, and what we can expect in the other th uh, two legs. Um, and it also depends too if the first leg down in the correction is five waves, then we'll have three back up and then another five down in terms of a zigzag. Um, if it's three waves, well then we've got a triangle or we've got a flat uh, uh, correction. So it, it just sort of depends as such. We're calling this as a, uh, a fourth wave back, um, the fourth wave in most uh, indices. The fourth wave back, as you know, can be sideways and complicated and can take a few days uh, to, to, to unwind. So, um, you know, just manage your risk properly and um, let's just sort of see how it develops. It's not such a good idea to trade in wave fours as they can create overlapping wave structures. Uh, so this is this is uh, on a 15 minute chart here. So we're looking, you know, we're looking for it to test down lower into uh, the 13.5 here, and it can quite easily, you know, have a come down, bounce off this, move back up, retest supply, and then move down here again. So we could be here for two days because um, wave fours are a bit complicated, but we may just get lucky and bounce off here, and we'll we'll move straight back up here. To complete the pattern up here at um, uh, at uh, thirteen thousand six hundred and fifty, roughly, you know, um, so just a little bit unknown in in here. I mean, all we knew yesterday so it was that it was creeping along and it was getting you know tired. So um, you know, it's it's all sort of panning out here. The idea was to lock in profits at uh, thirteen five hundred and fifty here. Uh, until we know where where we are, so that's pretty much the bottom line, really. And um, same with the S and P five hundred here as well. You know, it's coming back up to its old high up through here. Um, expected to to be correcting between the fourteen sixty and the fourteen sixty five here, and and that's panning out. And the closest largest number is fourteen fifty, um, but it could come down to the fourteen forty five there. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, once again, a little bit sort of unsure about that, but um, let's just see how that goes. Obviously, the US dollar would be doing the opposite uh, of that bounce off the 79 that we talked about. Um, yeah, and this is just pretty much the same here. So this is the S&P 500 as well, just sort of tracking in the top here. So we're just really looking at the first leg to move down through here. This is the trend line support here from down here. Wave fours always break the trend lines anyway. Um, not always, but 90% is good enough for always in this market, um, in the markets. Uh, so yeah, let's just see how that develops down through here. So there'll be more, you know, there'll be some sort of bounce, um, uh, but we'll also see uh, probably further downside as well. <clears throat> Same within the European markets as well. Slightly different counts though, um, but all, all the same positive uh, uh, to here as well. So uh, just looking at, just clean that up a little bit. Uh, we've got from uh, the, the DAX here, um, we've got this 
this corrective pattern, this A, B and C here in three waves. So we know that that's corrective. So we know that that top will be eventually taken out. We'll see a high above the 75. Um, so we've got up for wave one and A, B, C back for wave two. And this is up for one here, back for two here. And I think this is the five waves in here for the third wave here. And this would be looking at uh, its fourth wave uh, here, so to speak. We should come back to the 38.2 retracement level from that point there to that high there. Um, of course, this little block here is the first support. So we'll see how that uh, develops through there. But we do need to expect some type of correction across here. And this is a bit like the classic trading levels pattern where you have your arrival, your, your reaction, the support, the first high above the level, and then the correction starts. And you just really need to stand aside from that and then wait for support. And once it's got support, then you've got the foundation of that correction for uh, for for the for the next trend, and the bigger the the, the correction is, the safer the the next trend because the bigger the correction, the bigger the accumulation process would be through through the corrective process, and that would equal uh, uh, time and price squaring up as well. So um, always looking for a big correction, and new traders don't tend to look for uh, corrective patterns, but the corrective patterns are where the trend is going to be engineered from so uh, understanding the correction is really imperative and also too it's the corrections that always take your money so um, you know you need to make corrections your best friend. Um, the Australian market uh, has really been the strongest uh, market out of uh, all of them uh, but once again um, you know it has its corrections as well and that's what it's doing so um, we're looking at this being a wave one and ABC for wave two, and we're looking for the upside here. And we this is probably the one, the two, the three. But we're getting. We were yesterday we we're talking about the seventy-two subgroup two area here um, as the resistance point, and that's played out nicely. And it appears that we're getting a three-wave correction down through here. So we would know that the support for this would be in the uh, forty-five twenty and forty-five thirty. The Shanghai markets are. Um, uh, pushing up quite nicely. If I can just bring those up for a second here. Um, just bring this over here. Uh, you can see that you know we were looking at uh, we were looking at this this um, well first of all the bounce off off the uh, major trading level here. That's the first thing and the second thing is that the bounce and we just normally wait to see what sort of steam uh, how much steam comes into it but we've seen this correction coming through here we can see this correction here um, on lower volume here so we know that it, it was a correction a corrective pattern and, and a new high would be made and also as well this would be across the 21 which is the minor first minor trading level and now we've got that strong volume coming in through here as well. So uh, growth, as you know, comes from the US and China and uh, India's there as well. And there's a whole lot of other countries there now as well. But um, they're the main engines of, of it. And um, yeah, you know, so uh, this is looking quite chirpy here. So it's just nice to see that the US and the uh, and, and China of uh, you know showing this upside there and um, that's why the Australian market and of course Australia and Canada um, you know the uh, the suppliers are for uh, confidence of consumers buying so to speak and products in the in the engines in the global engines the US and, and China so um, that's why we're going to benefit from from that um, but uh, look, uh, so yeah, this corrective pattern down. If <clears throat> if the forty five fifty becomes support, then um, uh, then that's great. That's the setup on that side there. If the price comes down here further, because the S and P five hundred and the Dow could come down further, uh, as just pointed out then you need to wait for it to move down first and then find support back up. So if it hits on the 20 and then find support on the 30, well, then you get a little bit in there and, uh, you know, and you move back up to the 50, you know the 50 is going to be hit, but uh, you can hold on to that or take it and wait for the support to be hit. Um, you know, if the price, um, you know, comes down here even further and then find support back up, it's just got to dip first. You know, it's like it's like the 
fifty here, you know, it's 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 come down below it. So if it gets back on it, well then that's you're you're on support. You don't want to be facing the closest largest number as resistance. You want that as support. And that will just simply improve your trading. Okay, let's have a look at the commodities. They are a little bit mixed, um, and rightfully so, because the US dollar uh, index is bouncing off the 79 uh, as a little wave four. Okay, here's the uh, the US dollar here just to start with. It's um, it's it's sort of cranked up here the last time that, that I looked at it when I've been writing the report here. Um, the the structure that we're following to the downside here is down for one, back for two, down for three, and back for four. The wave four here would be pulling back 38.2%, which comes in at uh, the 79.50 there. So that's roughly, no, it's above that. So it's already above that. So it is a bit of that is a bit of a concern. And the reason that it is a bit of concern uh, pushing to the upside is that um, this move down through here so far is really in three waves. So it can be a B wave. We may still be trapped in wave four if that's the case. I was really hoping that wasn't the case. Uh, what do I mean by that is that this this is the problem with wave fours. They just can get really complicated. Um, this A, B, and C here that we're tracking um, may just uh, increase in size and meaning that uh, quite simply is that this B wave can now come to here because we've got three waves here and the this wave four would have to be over here and the C wave would be over here and this uh, A wave here would have to be here, so a larger A, B, C pattern that can, that can occur, which will obviously drive the indices and also the commodities to the downside. So that 79.50 as support or resistance uh, is something that we'll be keeping a close eye on now that that's popped up there. I was sort of hoping that, um, that it would uh, stay uh, within group one, um, we'll see. But the other point is too that this uh, trend line here is always good to keep in, in play as well in terms of retesting that uh, and failing from that point. So um, let's just see how we go. I've just sort of opened the door for a larger picture here. I don't think that's the case, but we always need to explore um, all the possibilities uh, and then eliminate them one by one. So just having them on the table there makes us mindful of, of them as such. Um, yeah, so looking back into um, the uh, the commodities, the oil market here first. Um, so we're looking at uh, we're looking at this pattern to, to move up through here. Now, um, what we've been looking at th through here is that uh, with this this whole move up through here can be based as an A and a B and a C correction, um, or it can be up for one, back for two. Uh, and going up here for the next wave one here, and then we'll be looking at the A, B, C back for uh, wave two here. Uh, that can come into play here as wave two. And then we're looking for wave one up and wave two back, and then wave one up and wave two back. So expecting you know, a, a sort of a sharper push to the upside through here. Um, so let's just sort of see how we go with that. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, not, not really much to sort of say about that. So yeah, so we're on WPL uh, to the upside, so any of those oil stocks would be good. If it takes out the bottom of this one here, then the structure that we've just outlaid here um, would be broken and we'd be looking to the downside. So that um, US dollar index would be a concern. We really need the US dollar index to stop um, uh, in its tracks at the 79.50, uh, so keep an eye on that. But um, good support on the 92 here, as testing it now, um, and also on the 93 here would send it, of course, to the upside there. So we can see that um, just drilling down to the 20 minute chart here, we can see this move back down through here is in nice three waves here. Um, so that's a real positive um, thing. So that means that the, the top of this would be taken out, and also that move. Um, here 
is starting to look into five waves as well. So look at this as an impulse wave and then an A and a B and a C correction back. And if it drops below the 92 and then finds support on the 92, then, then you've got yourself a long trade from that point because this would be like the classic trading levels pattern where you have your arrival, your reaction, the first high above the level, and then the correction unfolding, A, B, C, and then finding support on there. So that would be the setup from that point there. Um, the copper markets as well, um, in terms of what we've been doing here, just go back over this for a second. We have a bigger chart here for this, just, just bear with me a second. Okay, so this is the daily chart here. And what we'll look considering here is that um, basically we've got this nice strong move up here as the third wave, an A and a B and a C here for wave four, but wave fours can get complicated, but we're just pegging that in there for the time being. This move up through here is not really showing us an impulse wave to the upside, so it's a little bit of a concern, but it is positive in the sense that it's crossed over the, uh, the 72 there, and um, yeah, so that's a bit of a positive. USBHP is is dealing with um, 72 again through here, so support on the 72 here would be uh, would be its next step and be critical. And support on the 72 would flip the the, the, the bias to the to the upside there. Um, but just coming back into the this ABC correction and this move up through here, the price is retesting the 72 there, the 372. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So we've got the on the two hour chart, we've got the A, the B, and the C wave to here, and we've got this move up up through here, which could be a could turn into an impulse wave, it's fine, but it also counts as a corrective wave as well. We don't really want it going below this uh, 368 here, then that would make it a bit corrective at that stage there. So let's, let's just keep an eye on that as well. So it's really got to do with the US dollar and. Um, uh, and, uh, and and what happens uh, here as well? We know that the the indices are, are a little bit um, you know are, are correcting, so uh, that's just going to sort of push boundaries uh, uh, here and, and and prices to the, the limits in terms of support and resistance, and the gold market as well. So. What we're looking for here is we're looking for we're looking at this being a move up through here at uh, wave one or the A wave, and then a move back as an A and a B and a C for wave two or B wave through here. So that low is really well that really needs to, to hold into place here. But what we're looking for here in terms of trading is that we need to be on that support there. We need to be on the 1750 as support. So that's what you can look for. Um, otherwise, this could it move further down? Obviously, if it takes, if it breaks the 1730 here, low here, then we'd see it down at the 1720 here. But we were sort of considering and hoping that um, this structure here was an A wave, an A and a B and a C for the B wave, and then the C wave down in five waves here to complete here, and then we'd see this market work to the upside. And it's still still possible, but we need to see that US dollar turn to that 7950 and, and move to the downside. And it will also depend to how much gold follows our indices as well, and how much indices will pull back as well. And this would be the same for silver as well. Uh, silver here with its uh, move here. This move here can be corrective or impulsive. Um, a low down through here would make this a wave three and a wave four and then we'll see further downside uh, here and have to count this as a wave five to the downside. So any long trades here would have to have as always the uh, group one as support uh, and that's not there and even so even if we use the 33 here then uh, the move up here that we we're talking about yesterday, I think it was yesterday, that um, you know it's as a, the retest coming back down here would need still need support here. So then you would use the ten and the twenty to to, to build the trade in from that point there. So it's not like we're caught. It doesn't matter about being wrong or right. It's all about the setup and the risk involved in it. So <clears throat> so this is this this is. Um, it does appear to be sort of corrective and new lows can be made uh, here. Um, so, yeah, but I just expect one more new low to be made here because we've got, um, we've got the one, the two, 
the three, the four, and this here would be down for one, back for two, and then this would be all of the third wave in here, which would be basically the one and the two, the three, the four, and the five here for the third, the fourth, and the fifth here. So we'd see a new low come in here and then a move back up through here. So it's not like we're going to miss anything anyway. It's just a matter of different commodities have slightly different patterns to to work with. Alrighty, well let's have a look at um, at the at the FX. Okay, the bounce for the US dollar off the 79 here would count something like this in terms of an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave up here for wave four. And the C wave will have five waves in it, so it would be wave one, wave two. The wave three here is still unfolding, so that would bring us reasonably close into the 79.50 here, probably somewhere in about here. Wave 4 would pull back to the fourth wave one lesser degree here, and the fifth wave should bring us sort of about here somewhere, normally about if the extension's in wave 3 here, then wave 1 and wave 5 here will be about the same in terms of distance. So uh, hopefully we should see that uh, pan out and then fall it over from that point. So the indices will be doing the opposite from this and so will the um, the euro and um, the Australian dollar will be amongst this as well. So when we look at the euro here, uh, the euro we've been looking at this move coming up through here in terms of up for wave one, back for wave two, and then up for wave three here. It's a two hour chart. So we're looking for 38.2 retracement level coming back here, which is uh, about here. Uh, around the the um, the, the uh, 44 here, so in, in that little bunch, that little that little area there will be the support there. So once that comes in there, so there'll also be let's just drill into that there. So got this move down through here. So we'd be looking at uh, this is the 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 one and the two, and this would be the third wave unfolding down through here but the third wave's not finished yet this is a five minute chart so we've got the one the two the, th the three here there'll be the four the four's unfolding now and there'll be the fifth down to here somewhere and then there'll be the fourth wave and the fifth wave down so we should see it down around this area through here um, and that would be the same with the Australian dollar no doubt so the Australian dollar here as well in terms of the four hour chart looking at uh, this low down here as the wave one the wave two we can see that the 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 market's broken out <clears throat> of this channel here and that's a really good good way of identifying wave three so we can identify wave three uh, as being in this top here so we'd look for a, a 38.2 retracement level from that point to that point so that would bring us down to uh, around the the 10350 if not a tad lower through here uh, so look look for that. So it's in its corrective pattern here. The wave this would be a wave four coming down through here. So the wave four will be complicated and sideways, and it, it's just really got a lot of it's it's just um, it's just energy sort of squaring up because it took a lot of effort and volume to to to, to push this up through here, and it just needs you know it's a quite emotional event and it needs to to unwind that emotional event uh, in terms of pattern and that's what it's doing and it's what it will do. Um, so it's not a good idea to trade in wave fours. Uh, so just be know what you're doing in wave fours because they are normally uh, overlapping wave structures and normally sideways and complicated. So um, it's best just to sit back and allow them to unfold and then look for support uh, and and then move in from that point there. And so wave force can be uh, the minimum there'll be is three swings. They uh, can also be triangles, which are, are five swings as well. So that's what we're looking at there. If we can just drill into that a bit closer, see what we've got in there now. It's been a bit complicated, this top here. Um, yeah, so... I'm not sure if this is the A and this is the B and this is the C and that could be the low there as well because we were looking for it to come back into this section uh, here. Um, let's just see how, how the Australian market opens. Uh, check New Zealand first, that always gives you a nice um, early start to the day and um, and then watch for Japan to open as well, Have a keep an eye on the yen and the Chinese market is, is quite strong and perky as well, so um, and so is the ASX as well, so this is just a reaction 
reaction from the 104. We'll see higher ground. We'll be looking at the 105. We're just trying to find support here. So if the 103.72 becomes the support now that it's spiked down below here, then you can have a crack at moving in through here. And then you would add on the 80 here being support. Uh, then you, <clears throat> you'd want to get out um, uh, here as well. I'm sure it can push up through here, but um, the this price action in, in 10, 20 and 30 here, Group 1, will also slow the price down as well. Um, but uh, at the moment it's retesting the 72 and it can fail from that point. And if it fails from that point, then we need to look at it coming down into this little area here as support. Alrighty, well, uh, that's it. Um, so, yep, that's it. Uh, have a good weekend. And um, also we're going down to the ATAA in uh, in Adelaide at the end of the month. Uh, we'll be talking about the, the robo method there. So if you're around, it'd be nice to catch up. Alrighty, cheers. <laughs>